I always th thought that this place is a kind of a constant uh, uh, mutation, I would say, and, and uh, change. And uh, also because I'm moving in soon into a, another studio, redesigning the, 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 old, uh, the old cabin for the, for, for, for the purpose. But it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, it, well, what's interesting these days is actually you can, uh, it's not like uh, when I started where you were, we were quite stuck in one place, but now with uh, modern technology, you can, you can basically work in any, anywhere. I'm also being able, even if my, this is my headquarter, I would say, I, I, can, I can work uh, anywhere in the world these days with uh, just a laptop and a few, few keyboards or, or plugins. And this is a kind of uh, fantastic uh, uh, chance and luck for uh, producers these days. I remember in my, when I was a teenager, my mom was saying, but why didn't, why didn't you choose the violin? Because it's much, much easier to carry, and to carry on and to go on tour with. And these days, I could say that with a, with a laptop, it's even smaller than than a violin, and you can do much more. I mean, this whole uh, this whole project Oxymore is based on on, on this idea that uh, uh, I wanted to pay tribute to the uh, roots of uh, electronic music and the, the French way, the continental European way of uh, doing uh, electroacoustic music and electronic music. We don't know enough that we don't realize that uh, actually everything started in uh, continental Europe, both in, in Germany and in France uh, and, uh, and Italy and, and, and nothing to do with uh, the US originally, nothing to do with the jazz or rock or, or, or um, blues and uh, probably because we have this heritage from uh, classical music where we're not, uh, we were not uh, trapped into the pop format of three minutes and, and also because we, we, uh, we had this kind of uh, approach, and especially in France, with people such as Pierre-Henri and Pierre Schaeffer, who are, in my opinion, really the, the, the real pioneers of uh, the way we are doing music these days, is actually uh, uh, directly linked to what they, uh, what they did. In the late 40s, Pierre-Henri, Pierre Schaeffer were, were people who, who suddenly uh, thought that it could be cool to uh, introduce noise and uh, uh, into orchestral sounds and mixing actually uh, 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 using field recording process, uh, mixing sounds of nature or, or the city or uh, with orchestral sounds or, or, or electric, mu electric sounds. In the late 40s, they, they suddenly, I mean, they, they created more or less everything we are doing now. I mean, avant-garde most of the time is when you are, when you are, uh, cl we become classical, 30 years later Stravinsky was avant-garde and then 30 years later his music became classical. And uh, for them, their music is not may maybe that popular these days, but the way, wh what they, they define, they define the grammar and the vocabulary of contemporary, of, of the, the way we are producing music these days. Whatever you, whatever you do these days, hip hop, rock, electro, uh, uh, techno, we're all integrating sound effects in our music, uh, noises in our music. And these guys were at the origin of all this by saying, okay, we could mix the sound of a bird with a clarinet or the sound of a washing machine with percussions. And, and this, is, this, this was totally crazy in, the, in those days. And nowadays it's almost... Uh, our day-to-day -day approach of, uh, of m music production. Oxymor, as we know, oxymoron, is actually the idea of uh, uh, joining two elements which have nothing to do with each other, with each other and to, to create something uh, unexpected. And it's what uh, the roots of electronic music are, uh, is all about. Uh, electronic music started with uh, people in, uh, in Germany, uh, around Stockhausen or, or around Pierre Schaeffer here, I mean, I, I mean stealing some uh, filters of uh, oscillators from uh, radio stations uh, made for maintenance, not made for music, and doing music with it. And, and the same with uh, music concrete by, by uh, uh, recording some, uh, as I said, some, some noises from uh, nature from cities from the human body and mixing it with uh, orchestral sounds or electric uh, instruments so this 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 is an, an oxymor oxymoron approach uh, on its own so i th i thought it was, could be quite quite cool to uh, to conceive an, an entire album around this concept so this is the reason why that uh, actually uh, oxymor like oxygen uh, they have something in common 
apart apart from the sound of the title, uh, the fact that uh, when I did Oxygen, I had no reference. I had no references because electronic music was really a, at the beginning, was really starting. So my references were not uh, more linked to movies or paintings that, than uh, music. For Oxymor, for Oxymor, it was the uh, the same. I had decided to uh, 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 compose music for for the first time, not. Uh, in stereo, but in three, 360 and, and uh, multi-channel. What does it mean? For me, I always thought, since I studied with uh, these, these uh, uh, great pioneers such as Pierre Schaeffer, uh, that uh, stereo doesn't exist in nature. When I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you in, uh, in mono. When a bird is singing, he's singing in mono. And uh, it's the, the environment around us and our ears as uh, human beings which are creating the perspective in audio. And uh, uh, ironically, the technology today is allowing us to go back to a very natural way of listening to music. Uh, for centuries, we, we were in front of the music. We, we had a 2D relationship with music. When you are composing for symphonic orchestra, you, you, are, you, you know that you have the violin on one side, the percussions on, in the center, and the, the winds on, on the other side. And then you, we, we, uh, we, when, you are, when we are in studio, we have two speakers in front, of, in front of us. When you are in concert, you have the PA systems in front of, of you. So you, we had this kind of constant uh, relationship with sound, almost like a painter with uh, his canvas. And, uh, and with three, 360 and, and multi-channel these days, you can go inside the music, like, you, like uh, the difference you have between uh, painting and sculpture, in a sense. And then, is the reason why I'm not a great believer of um, uh, lots of production these days talking about special music and, uh, and uh, binaural music, where most of the time you are, you are put, taking stereo production, I mean music produced in stereo, and then, then specializing them afterwards or mixing them in binaural or in 360 afterwards. For me, it's a little bit like uh, 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 putting colors on a black and white movie. The game changer is actually to conceive and compose the music from scratch in 360, saying, okay, these sounds, I would like to put these sounds here and maybe moving it to there. And it's, of course, something totally different in terms of um, uh, composition process and in terms of uh, producing music, because suddenly you have to deal with a totally different uh, space. And I've always been obsessed since my early days into uh, the relationship between music and space. And suddenly to, to be able to uh, uh, do an arrangement, an orchestration uh, in space is like putting planets audio planets around, around your head. And this, of, of course, is, is, a, is a, total, a total different approach. And this is what, what Oxymor is all about. And uh, I'm absolutely convinced that with the emergence of Metaverse, with the emergence of development of uh, VR and uh, XR, I mean, this is going to be the, the way of producing music in the next few years. And I'm, I'm pretty convinced that uh, in, uh, in a few years from now, we, we'll, cease, we'll consider Stereo with the same... Uh, 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 with the same nice feeling that you, we, can, we can see a gramophone these days uh, from our grandparents in mono, it's a mo from mono. Uh, but stereo is great because the, the clever guys in the, in the 1940s said, okay, why not creating a delay between the left channel and the right channel and, and, and then creating the illusion of, of, uh, of space. And, that, and it, this is great. Uh, we did uh, lots of masterpieces have been done with this process, but now, it's not a matter of just having an illusion of space. It's actually creating music in real space. And that's, of course, is a total game changer. It's what, what I really tried to explore with Oxymore. This is the reason. And I did Oxymore with no pressure because I had no references like, like Oxygen. This is the link I wanted to, to make with Oxygen. So I did, I did it in a, uh, in a total, I would say, freestyle, free, with, just by experimenting. I know that the next album, will be it's not going to be the same because I will have Oxymor as a reference. So the, the freshness I had with, uh, uh, with Oxymor is the same kind of freshness I approached Oxygen in, in those days. This is the reason why for me it's a, it's a very special project to, to me and I hope for the audience. 2023 is going to be uh, quite exciting for, for me because, you know, I think every generation 
is bringing new technology. And I've been really lucky to, uh, uh, to meet a company such as Coda, uh, because just Coda is just uh, in sync and in phase with uh, uh, not only my expectations, but the expectations, in my opinion, of the, the way we would like to receive and to enjoy music uh, these days, not being in front of the music, but be, being, being uh, inside the music. In terms of performance, the, the, the idea that uh, that's going to happen in the, in the mid-aim in the next few days and hopefully uh, uh, during 2023 for other projects is actually to, to, uh, to invite the, the, the audience to be inside the music so, so to, and, and then to create an whole uh, environment where the audience can be surrounded by, uh, by, the, uh, by the speakers and not just in front of it. Uh, and even if you are in in, uh, in front of it, to find some tricks and some some ways, and we are discussing with uh, with Coda uh, to try to to ease also this uh, this process, and and we are following different uh, uh, we have different ideas for for that. I mean, because of course the fact of suddenly having a, a kind of uh, uh, being surrounded by speakers means that we have to in the future to re to invent new holes new uh, uh, an old new uh, ecosystem and that's not going to happen tomorrow morning so if we want to to share which is my my priority as a musician to share my music today we have to find some some tricks and to hijack again or to to, to twist the, the actual the current uh, uh, the current holes the current and, and to be creative but I'm, I'm I'm very enthusiastic to be able to uh, to uh, share my music in such a uh, efficient way emotionally because you know we can we can talk for hours about technology but actually who cares because the the only the only result is the 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 the, the emotions the feeling and the content and i can uh, you know in no way I, I could justify you have lots of people justifying what they are doing by the technique they are using okay the tech, technology we are using is interesting to to uh, uh for the reasons we just uh, we just um, um talking about but by the end of the day the only thing what matters is the result is the content and uh, but the content is directly linked and interdependent on the technology you're using so we see that uh, it's for for a painter for a graphic artist for uh, when you take avatar is the fantastic is a fantastic movie not only because it's, uh, it's, uh, Cameron is using fantastic uh, revolutionary technology, because, but also because the content is, uh, is extraordinary. So you know it works, it works both ways. Coda is a very uh, interesting company because they, they, are also, uh, they have a very creative approach in terms of, uh, of the way speakers should be part of our day-to-day -day life in the future. Uh, the big question with technology for, for us even is do we, do, do we want to um, uh, show technology or to make it invisible? I think there is no answer for that because both, both uh, directions have pros and cons. The fact that uh, you, you show the technology is, uh, is uh, reinsuring for the audience psychologically and for, because you say, okay, the sound is, uh, my sound is powerful so I want to... to uh, to show how powerful my sound is. So that's one direction and it's, it's, it's okay. The other way is also to make uh, technology invisible, like, and, and this is also, it goes also with our times where uh, we are thinking about um, a kind of uh, respect of environment, uh, a kind of uh, purity in terms of uh, our relationship with technology. It goes with electric cars, it goes with, uh, pollution or absence of pollution and visual pollution is, uh, is of, of course an issue and, uh, and uh, CODA is, uh, is developing something that uh, uh, is going to be a big game changer in the, in the future is actually to, to create these kind of fantastic panels uh, which are actually panel, acoustic panels I mean with speakers and, and the sound is absolutely Fantastic! The same sound as the most uh, uh, and the, the most sophisticated uh, speaker you can have, or sound system you can have. But also, what Coda is developing uh, uh, is the, this kind of uh, magic panels. Pa magic panels because they are invisible. They are very thin. The, the sound is absolutely amazing. You can project on them, 
visuals and also they have a, a, they have acoustic properties you can also uh, you know the big problem in uh, in any kind of uh, gigs is actually you, you are coming in a uh, in an environment not made necessarily except if you are in a theater and even in theaters it's not necessarily ideal for for music uh, where the acoustic is is really bad, and you have to to put a lots of efforts for sound engineers to make the this the 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 whole acceptable and and okay for 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 what for, the, for what you have, and to have uh, an equipment which can also at the same time uh, giving you the best possible sound and also adjusting the whole is something quite quite amazing. And uh, my dream is actually in my next studio to have this kind of equipment in my in my own uh, environment because i think it's going to change also i I'm, i don't say that it should replace uh, the fact that uh, speakers should should be uh, visible because it's nice also to have a visual reference but sometimes not and and coda is uh, with that technology is offering the choice between uh, between both uh, 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 both use case or both, both possibilities Music is uh, is not flat anymore. I mean, we 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 must uh, we must try to uh, to to create something uh, uh, a different link, different relationship with uh, the listeners, and uh, even with one speaker. But I've I've been really uh, quite impressed by the fact that every every uh, uh, piece of equipment in the range of uh, Coda uh, uh, technology is based on the idea that uh, you forget you forget technology and you forget also where the sound is coming from and uh, this is you know what uh, the magic of music is when you 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 it's, it's true for an orchestra when you you listen to i don't know uh, right of spring from stravinsky you don't you don't after a while you you except for a musician who technically is able to to follow every details and it's not maybe the, the best way to listen to enjoy music but otherwise uh, you can listen Miles Davis or Pink Floyd or whoever and after a while you you don't you don't know where the music is coming from but with two speakers and 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 stereo it's still it's still the uh, you still trap into uh, into the, the limitations and uh, with uh, Coda technology, even if you are in stereo, you don't you don't you don't feel you don't feel stereo. And I've been really impressed by the, the, this kind of uh, vision. And I think it's a, it's a vision very in sync and in phase with our times, where um, we are all talking all over the world about uh, immersive worlds and the emergence of immersive worlds with VR, metaverse, and uh, and all that. And uh, and we forget that everybody is talking when we are talking about metaverse about uh, visuals, and we forget that uh, sound is much more important for human beings than visuals for 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 the for giving the feeling of uh, of immersion. I mean, the visual visual field is 140 degrees, the audio field is 360 degrees. So when you are in the middle of a metaverse, for instance, the sound is crucial. This is the reason why that in the next few months and few few years. I mean, it's a moment of disruption where musicians and, and, and music producers and, uh, are, are going to, to, uh, to work in a totally different way. And I, I'm glad that Toximo is contributing to open the door to these new exploration, new territories. You know, I think that I'm not a technician, I'm not an engineer, but uh, uh, you don't ask a, pia a pianist to, to fix a piano. But technology and uh, and art are really linked. We, we, we separated, and especially in Europe, for too long, culture and technology. I think they are absolutely interdependent. And, uh, to, uh, and, and you know, it's, uh, uh, to understand for, 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 for me and for, for a music producer, to understand the acoustics and the, the, the law of, uh, of a speaker. Of a, it's like a, for a violin player to understand the violin. It's the ultimate instrument. This studio is my, my main instrument. And uh, so, of course, the way uh, I receive the music through the speakers is going to be, to, as everybody can understand, it's almost a cliche to say that it's going to, to, to be the necessary uh, passage to communicate whatever I want to, to share with the audience. 
and, and for the audience the same. So what's, what's important is we have to actually, at the same time, uh, try to push the boundaries of technology and never forget also the de democratization of this technology. The fact that, for instance, when we're talking multi-channel, some, pe some people could say, yeah, of course, but you, you need this kind of equipment and all that. No. With binaural technology, you can have with your standard standard uh, standard headphones and your smartphone, you can have the total immersive experience. But this ex immersive experience has has been designed uh, with uh, it has to be designed in professional studios where you can uh, the composer the producer has to listen to uh, his his project in the m most possible and most uh, efficient way uh, possible. And this is what a company that like Skoda is uh, offering me and offering us. Because limitations are also very important for artists. And uh, you can, uh, and it's because, because of limits, because you're, you're setting up your, your own limits that you can create something specific. And actually, uh, with uh, 360 these days, we as musicians, we have still a lot of limitations because if you are, you are talking about Dolby Atmos, Dolby Atmos has, has been developed and de 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 designed and devised for um, movie, th movie theaters, for the movie industry. Dolby Atmos is allowing us, is allowing to, for any spectator to, to, to have the dialogue in, in, in front of you and then the uh, music on, on each side and sound effects on, uh, uh, on, 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 on the back. For, for a musician, it's not. We are much more egocentric. Uh, we we need to have a, an equidistant relationship with every everything around. So actually, even Dolby Atmos these days is not made for us. We have we had for 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 um, uh, for Oxymore, we had to to cheat and to to actually uh, adapt an, a, tech, a technology not made for us. And this is why I. I uh, I love. Uh, I mean, this is the position, uh, the uh, never-ending story with uh, with musicians is actually to to hijack technology, which had not been necessarily developed for us, but then creating our own style from this kind of accidents and this kind of uh, hijacking approach. In days where we we know that we can only survive, is technology and ecology will 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 evolve in good faith, and and uh, the fact that. Uh, uh, developers for audio are thinking the fact that, for instance, in electric cars or in a, in a day to day environment, uh, less is more. The fact that uh, the fact that suddenly you, you become less intrusive is something that goes with uh, our times. We are not in the 80s, in the 90s anymore, where where, where everything had to be big. You can you can be uh, uh, being big and being ambitious. Is not the same, and uh, and uh, a company such as Coda is uh, ambitious with the with the concept of uh, less is more. And it's what I like. In ten years' time from now, the emergence of artificial intelligence and development of uh, well, then development of AI and development of uh, VR and metaverse is going to be a, a huge game changer. Uh, also, in terms of ecology, in terms of uh, 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 our relationship with uh, energy, but beyond that, uh, the fact that uh, we are, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not afraid about uh, robots, you know, I'm not afraid at all about uh, the development of uh, AI. Every step in, uh, in, uh, in, in technology is offering great opportunities for artists. And uh, it's, it's, it's going to be, uh, so in, in the next uh, 10 years, I think, first of all, immersive sounds is going to be uh, uh, is going to be the, the stereo of the 21st century. I'm absolutely convinced of that. So I've actually, a, a company such as Coda has, uh, is totally in sync when, when, once again uh, in, uh, in our times. The fact that uh, also uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, music, you will be able to uh, conceive, produce, uh, dis uh, compose and distribute your music and to share your music from your living room. It's already the case with internet, but it's still uh, very basic because you, you, you still have to deal with uh, a kind of uh, okay improved version of MP3. But it's still very basic. We're still in the dark age of uh, of technology in audio, and we have 
a kind of uh, fantastic highway ahead of us with, uh, with the development of uh, technology and the fact also that uh, with uh, the development of uh, uh, all the immersive worlds, we are going to share our uh, music and our uh, creative uh, uh, production with lots of, uh, uh, lots of different people. Uh, there is also a social aspect to, uh, to uh, uh, VR and metaverse and immersive world. The fact that uh, some people f isolated for geographic reasons, for reasons of handicap, can share uh, at the same time, I would say almost shoulder against shoulder, uh, even if these shoulders are virtual. It's a fantastic opportunity for young, young artists, for young producers to, uh, uh, to be part of this new ecosystem. And I think the, the, the next 10, 20 years are going to be uh, absolutely amazing in terms of uh, 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 creativity, both for music and, and for, for visual arts. I'm a great believer that uh, I'm not a technician, I'm not an engineer. I mean, people are thinking because you, you are in electronic music, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Noise is about... <laughs> You know, noise is everywhere, and this we can do music with this. Music you know, one. just just the beginning of a future hit, maybe. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly.